Welcome to Plant Medicine Transmissions with Javier Regueiro. In this podcast today, I would like to talk about my newest book, which has just come out in uh, ebook Kindle version. The Audible version will be available soon enough, while the print version will come out at the end of September. We decided to anticipate a little bit the coming out of the Audible and electronic version because the book was already ready and nowadays people are spending more time than usual reading and listening to various medias. The book is titled The Toe Datura Diaries, a shamanic apprenticeship in the heart of the Amazon jungle. And it's a book that I had in mind for some years already. What happened was my apprenticeship began in earnest with the toy plant. The toy plant is one of seven varieties of Brugmansia plants, which are cousins of the Datura plant. However, it's not quite the same. The Brugmansia family is a family of seven different kinds of these plants, and uh, there is one specific plant that does really well in the jungle, the Brugmansia suaviolens. So I consider this plant teacher the main teacher along my path of plant medicine because I did start my apprenticeship with a four-month-long dieta with this plant under the supervision and guidance of my teacher, Don Francisco Montes Xunia. This apprenticeship began with a four-month toe dieta, followed by one month with the tobacco and the ayahuasca plant, that my teacher suggested in order to help me come back to earth once again after four months with the toy. That apprenticeship continues to this day because, as my teacher is fond of saying, this is a science that never ends. There is always something to learn and explore. But uh, it has been followed by many more dietas the latest of which was my once again toy dieta last year in May of 2019. The idea for this book came about a few years ago when I started envisioning dieting with this plant teacher again. And uh, the interesting thing is that I never reread any of my journals from my 2005 2006 dieta. And the idea was uh, to diet again with this plant teacher and uh, to publish those journals from 2005 2006 and from a newer dieta. And what it came to be was a book that has a lengthy introduction where I speak about various themes and about this plant teacher. And then uh, publishing the journals from both dietas and adding to those entries occasionally whenever it felt uh, right, commentaries written from right now. So a month after this most recent dieta, I started typing on my laptop those journal entries from both dietas and began writing commentaries about certain of those entries. And that process was actually incredibly valuable to me because in May of last year, what happened is I came back to Pisac after a very pleasant 
not particularly challenging dieta of three and a half weeks. But what happened upon my return to Pisac is that I was in a very altered state for a full two months after the closing of my dieta, and that the whole integration process took about seven months, which is longer than any integration process I've ever gone through. This integration process was difficult, and it was lengthy because of what I had experienced in the jungle. I am fond of reminding people that the stronger the experience that we may have with plant medicine, mind-altering substances, or spiritual initiation, that integration is more difficult the stronger the experience we have had. So after my return to Pisac, I spent two months during which time During my waking hours, I was constantly, nonstop, like under the influence of a mild dose of cocaine. When it became clear that this situation was beyond my ability to control it or change it, initially I was rather worried for my health and for my sanity and had uh, quickly to learn to surrender to the situation, to entertain the possibility that this change might be permanent, which luckily turned out not to be so. And I had to learn to take care of myself in the face of this totally unknown situation for myself. I am very grateful to myself for taking such good care of myself in those months. And that self-care even extended a very big part of it was feeling like I had to lay on my garden in the grass in order to ground this high energy before it would fry me. And that was an exercise that I would do for at least one hour every day. So the writing of this book helped me immensely integrate an experience that turned out to be more challenging than initially I had, of course, hoped for. But also the surprise was that all of this transformation and change in energetic state happened after the dieta, when I was far away from my teacher's center, which made things a little bit more difficult. In my book, I share a lot of these experiences at great length because the toe plant is very well known in the world, but very few people have actually experienced working with this plant teacher with the same degree of dedication that I have so far. Everybody has heard about the toxicity of this plant. We may have heard about some horror story with this plant or have met personally with someone that was negatively affected by this experience. I have met a couple of them and have quickly decided that I was going to do my best to avoid ending up like they did. As an advocate for the discerning and safe use of plant medicines, I decided to write a book that is also a cautionary tale against curious or bored people who may ingest this plant without the proper readiness and the proper support and guidance. Of course, everybody is free to do whatever they want with their lives, But this is one plant that I strongly recommend that you do not 
take on your own, under no circumstances. In the best of cases, please have a sitter. Have someone that you trust who's not going to leave you in the middle of it and who's not going to leave you to your own devices for the entire length of this experience. And of course, a preparation for this experience is also very important. When I first dieted with the toy, the first month I was drinking, on top of everything else, I was drinking a tea of the roots of this plant for a month. And uh, it was a very gentle process, but very powerful and much needed. My experience of that first month was that the plant was cleansing me, was polishing me like one would polish a crystal. And that polishing was most important in that it was preparing me physically and non-physically to what was to come. A year ago with my second Toe Dieta, I actually prepared in many ways and very thoroughly for three weeks before entering the jungle. I was aware that I was going to meet and interact with a plant energy that asks of us, or at least of me, great preparation, a lot of respect, and a serious awareness that this is not child's play. This plant is highly toxic. And in my second dieta, since I was there with my teacher only for three and a half weeks, my teacher actually dosed me very strongly. So much so that just after a couple of days of drinking twice a day, a decoction, a tea of this plant, I started hallucinating in broad daylight. And uh, that toxicity stayed with me for a couple of weeks after we closed the diet. I actually decided to call my teacher because I could feel the physical toxicity still in my system. And he gave me some easy guidelines on how to help my system clear that toxicity. But the biggest danger of engaging with this medicine is on the level of consciousness, of the possibility of totally losing one's mind and of becoming totally delusional. For some people, that phase of mild lunacy may last uh, a few days, a couple of weeks. For many, it is permanent. I have not met anybody who was seriously, in a negative way, affected by the ingestion of the toe, who's actually come back to sanity. Right before beginning my four months dieta in 2005, I checked online some information about the Datura. All I knew until then was that I felt a certain kinship with it and loved this plant. But when I read the, the, what people would leave on these forums, I was horrified. And on my way to go into the jungle, I was telling myself as I walked into the jungle, you are going to keep your eyes glued to the brightest light that you can find in this jungle or else you're going to get lost. And you're lost enough already. There's no need to get any more lost. And that is what I did for four or five months in the jungle then and what I did again last year and in the following months after the dieta. The only other thing that I knew about the toy when I expressed to my teacher my desire to work with it 
was that it's a plant that helps us connect with celestial energies. What I did not know and soon discovered by asking around a little more is that this plant is also capable, so to speak, of making anybody crazy. So, like I wrote in my book, I discovered that the doors to heaven and hell are actually right next to the other. And it's easy to confuse one for the other. Actually, this plant speaks both the gibberish of the insane as well as the language of angels. I devote a chapter to this theme of madness because it seems important to me. I find still to this day people who swallow something bigger than they're really ready to chew on. And um, that experience of feeling totally overwhelmed and incapable of integrating their experience is what leads a lot of people to a psychiatric institution. The inability to make sense and bring back into their daily lives the important peak experiences, the teachings, the insights that they have received, not only during a toe dieta, but even just with an ayahuasca ceremony or a San Pedro ceremony. This is a theme that is very important to me and therefore I speak about it very often because these plants are really here to support us in our awakening. But that experience can turn into a mild nightmare for some people who are not quite ready to bite into that apple just yet. I cannot stress enough the importance if one feels overwhelmed and confused after a peak experience to ask around and to speak with someone knowledgeable and caring enough to listen to them and to support them in their integration. Nowadays, uh, there are many beautiful people who have devoted their lives uh, to supporting their fellow brothers and sisters in integration. And I strongly recommend to anybody who feels a little lost to contact one of these integration therapists. I myself offer coaching and integration sessions and see the enormous value and benefit for my clients. In my work leading plant medicine retreats, we meet after each ceremony the day after, as soon as possible, to share our experiences. But for me, most importantly, is about dispelling whatever confusion, whatever misconception, misunderstanding about the experience that one has had the previous day. The shorter that time of confusion is, the better. So I recommend that if you are feeling a little confused, if there are aspects of past experiences that have left you with some confusion, with some doubt about it, to speak about it with someone as soon as possible. I will continue talking about my toy book, my experiences with this amazing plant teacher in the following podcasts, during which I will also be speaking about the process that happened in my most recent dieta, which was all about healing my wounded feminine. 
And this is a podcast that I strongly recommend to anybody who is in a process of healing their own wounded feminine side. Blessings.